When programming three, four, and five axis parts, the display of toolpath points can be very helpful when making toolpath adjustments. Sometimes more points are better, sometimes less points are better. No matter the scenario, let's take a look at how version 31 helps you make better toolpath decisions with the display of toolpath points. Okay, let's take a look at how we can utilize the toolpath points in order to make better decisions about our toolpaths. In order to find the toolpath points, we're going to launch simulation and we're going to look at some of the simulation settings uh, in order to display our toolpath points. All right, the first thing I'm going to go to is visibility and this is where you can turn your workpiece uh, or your stock model, you can have them show, be transparent, uh, opaque, or hide. In this example, I want to hide both of those uh, just so I can visualize the toolpath. Now, if you're not able to see all of your toolpath, if you go to toolpath rendering, um, this is where you can see uh, all the different toolpath options. You can uh, display the current operation, you can thicken the current operation, you can look at segments, you can follow it. But the area that we want to look at here is this section right here called toolpath points. And toolpath points are going to show the individual segments of the toolpath. Each one of these point locations technically would be a line of code. Okay. Now as, as you can see in this example in the corners we have very close point uh, locations and then as we get further into the the center of our shape, you can see the point distribution starts to uh, get larger. Um, how do these points help you make better decisions? Well, if you're running a, a four or five axis routine or even a three axis routine and you see the, the machine stalling or uh, if, you, if you see it delaying, it could be one of two things. Either you have too many points or you have not enough points. By displaying these toolpath points, uh, it really will help you make better decisions. Now, in this example, uh, let's say that we were getting a stall or a dwell uh, in our swarf cut. We may want to increase uh, the number of points in order to give the machine more information in order for it to drive along those curves. So let's take a look at how we can adjust that with our swarf toolpath. We're going to uh, close out the simulation. We're going to edit our multi-axis feature here and we'll go to parameters. And one of the options you'll see specifically to Swarf is uh, surface quality. Uh, in the other multi-axis toolpaths, you'll see uh, point density uh, and you can set a min-max. In this example, what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, decrease the max distance between the points and recalculate our toolpath. All right, we'll launch simulation again. And then with launching simulation again with those uh, toolpath points turned on, uh, now we're able to see that the density of the points, you can see how they made all of the points, we added a bunch of more uh, toolpath point locations or more toolpath, and you can see it's nice and consistent throughout the part. Uh, this is just one example of how utilizing toolpath points can help you make better decisions.